So this function is on our third person character, right? So we'll go to our third person character. We'll find interfaces here and add item to inventory. We'll implement this event and we'll place it somewhere a little bit closer to it other things that we've done here so we have it organized like so now the thing we want to do here is we want to communicate now with our component but we haven't even added our component so let's start by doing that so we add our component search for bpc and then you see bpc inventory here so now you see we've added our inventory here we can keep that name it's fine so now we have a reference to our inventory so we want to interact with this inventory basically and we want to say we want to add this item okay that's all good and fine but we haven't made any code in our uh, component yet so let's start by doing that then. we go to our uh, bpc inventory and here let's create a function let's call it attempt to add item and it should have as an input the structure of item info like so so the reason we're calling it attempt to add item is because we're not sure if this is going to succeed or not right because we might have a full inventory and the way we built this system right now in this example is we don't do a check before we just send it to an item uh, uh, an actor that has this component and if their inventory is overflowing, we'll have to deal with it somehow, like dropping it on the floor again. We'll call this uh, parameter that we send in uh, item to add. Okay, now the, the reasoning of how to build the, the inventory needs to start happening because now, how are we supposed to handle? An item being added well you can have something like a potion which might have 99 in a stack and you're getting five of those uh, potions in this particular instance uh, what do you want to do when you get those five potions well most likely you will want to add them to an already existing stack of potions right and just have it increase in in quantity so step one would be to have something here that says uh, add to existing slots slot being a slot in the inventory then so that that should be like our first step right and then from that we can make something like um, we could have it return if it was able to add it or not and um, if it was able to add or not we can have a branch after that saying how did it go basically and let's assume that we're going to keep track of not, not if it was successfully added but if if there's still quantity left to add so for example if we were to um, we had a stack of 95 potions and we added 5 potions and the stack is 99 as limit that means we would have we would be able to add 4 of those but we would still have 1 left then we would try to add it to other existing stacks that we had but let's say that there are no existing stacks then we need to continuously try to keep adding this item to our inventory as long as we can so if we have items left still to add here, what would be the next step to do here? Well, if we can't add it to existing slots anymore, then we would add, try to add it to, sorry, um, add to an empty slot, right? And this is basically what just what we're doing now. We're, we're structuring up how we would handle this. Um, if, however, we don't have uh, more than zero quantities left here then we would have a, a situation down here where it would be like uh, successfully added and that would be the state over here what happens then after this case when we have tried to add it to empty slots and we still determine that we have uh, items left 
Well, then we need to handle uh, what should we do with this item, right? Should we drop it on the floor? So let's have a branch here and say that if we still have items left at this point, uh, then we need to drop it on the floor. So drop on floor. And to make this super clear, maybe we should do this as a more than zero left. And more than zero left here as well. I think that should handle our basic logic here, right? We we come in here, we try to add to existing slots as much as we can. After we've tried to do that, we still determine, do we have more than zero left? If we don't, we're done, we have successfully added. If we have still stuff left, we try to find an empty slot to add it to. And after we've tried that, do we still have more than zero left? Uh, if we do, then we need to drop whatever remains on the floor, and if we do not, then we have successfully added it, and we can add another comment like that over here. So this is going to be our general logic here that we're going to be filling out as we go along. Now we are, however, getting to the point where we are sort of starting to need to have an actual representation of our interface, right? Our inventory. So let's start creating our inventory. So the plan is we're going to have one inventory which re or inventory one widget that represents our HUD which is everything that the player has on the screen so if you wanted to have like health bars over here and like a counter down here and something like that that would all be fitted on the HUD and we will also have a place where we put our inventory the inventory itself is going to be component based so it's going to have widgets of its own that it's consistent of. So we're going to be making one widget for the HUD, one widget for the inventory container and one widget type for each slot in the widget of the inventory container. So let's create those widgets immediately. So we call one W underscore HUD for the, the, the base plate so to speak. We create a user interface here called W inventory container and then well, that's was spelled a little bit wrong yeah, inventory container and then a third one for our blueprint which is the the slot which is the w inventory slot okay so let's start creating these then um We'll start with the slot because it will be easier this way. And for the slot, we're gonna be having a, a fairly simple uh, widget. And the reason for that is um, you just need something that is sort of like a, a template or a work in progress or something like that. And then you can easily, once you're done and have all the functionality, you can like uh, pretty it up and make it as fancy as you want. But we just want some basic functionality to see that it's actually working like we're intending, right? So we're going to remove the canvas panel to begin with. And we're going to change fill on fill screen to desired on screen. And then we're going to be adding a size box. A size box is a box which allows you to put uh, one item in it, I believe. Let's check if I'm right. A single child fixed size yes so this allows us to specify um, the, the size of this specific widget basically so this should probably be something that's matching uh, whatever um, images you're using or something like that to make sure that it's properly shown we're just going to be throwing out a number here to make it something so we're gonna take 100 pixels times 100 pixels which gives us a square and then inside of this box we're gonna put in something called an overlay and an overlay is a okay that didn't work overlay 
An overlay is um, an element that allows you to put multiple things on it so you can stack information, which is useful for us now because we're going to be wanting, for example, an image because we want to have an image for our icon and we're gonna be expanding it so it's align fill all on this one. We're gonna call this uh, image icon. Like so, and make sure that it's variable set. It should be automatically on, on images, but just in case. And the reason where we want to set this as a variable is because when we go to a graph here, that allows us to have a reference to our specific um, widget element, which we're going to be needing later on. Going back to our designer again, we want to add some more things. We want to add a text. And this text is going to be, this one is going to be just debugging, I think. So this one we'll, we will be removing later on, but we'll call this uh, item name. Like so, and we check the checkbox over here. And as default, we can put something here just so we see uh, it says something. So we can say like health potion, for example. We can change the color to something more visible. So like red, then we can see that it's sort of taking too much space. So we can go to our font and we can change our font a little bit. So we can go to maybe 16. That's still too big. How about 12? It's a little bit ineligible. 14 seems okay it's it's not going to be super important because mainly this will be let's do 12 anyway so it fits uh, this will be uh, debugging information for us basically and we will uh, in the end probably remove it completely and we can align it horizontally so that it's uh, centered after that we probably want to add another text um we add that to the overlay as well and we'll call this one item quantity or item amount might be better since we're calling it amount in other places so we'll make it a variable as well we will say that it should be aligned to the right and aligned to the bottom meaning that it will be in the bottom right we'll change the color to something like purple maybe and as an example we can put in like eight as a number and then we'll see what it sort of looks like so then we will have a number in the bottom right which would say how many we have and this is not pretty but functional this is basically what we're looking for the next step is we can um, let's leave the code for now and just go to the next uh, widget for now um, so the next widget is our inventory container now our inventory container um, is going to be also fairly simple and similar to the other one. We're gonna start off with removing the canvas panel because we don't want that. And we also want it to side on screen because we want it to have a certain size. And we're going to be adding a size box for this as well. And in this specific tutorial, we're not going to be making this uh, an inventory that scales for example we're just gonna have a specific size um, so since we made our uh, what's, what's it called uh, our slots uh, 100 times 100 let's say that we make our size box uh, 400 times 300 so we could fit 12 inventory slots in here and compile and in addition to that we want to have an overlay again here so we can place some different things like so and in the overlay we want to have just so we can make it clear that it's an inventory let's do a um, vertical box a vertical box is a box where you can fill a uh, elements in it and it will fill them from the bot uh, top to the bottom uh, as their size and order allows and what we want to do in this one is first of all we want to have two different things we want to have 
Let's say we go for another size box. And we have that as our first element in here. And we can choose to... Mm -mm. Let's put an overlay in this one as well. I tend to like overlays because they allow us for a lot of freedom when it comes to placing widgets inside of it. Uh, widgets or elements. And inside of this one we can take an image for example. So we'll place it like so. And we'll say that the image should take up... Let's do this. Size box should be taking up all the space. Overlay. Uh, also all the space. Image should least all the space in that but also in that one I think like so and let's add a text also like so on the overlay here and the text will say let's say inventory like so we can make the text green so that it's visible and let's find the image and we'll make that one black so the contrast is good. And our vertical box should be taking up all the space as well, like so. And we can see that our text is not aligned in the center, let's do that. So we'll horizontally align it like so. And that seems like an okay start, it's, it's functional basically. So that's what this first size box here uh, contains. After that, we'll start putting space for our actual widgets. We'll have a border just so we can have something put it in the vertical box. And the border will exist sort of like our background if we want to have it like that in our um, uh, to our widgets. And then we want to have a element, I think it's called uniform, uniform grid panel. And we'll put it under the border. And this uh, panel right here, we need to name something. We need to call it something like inventory container and make it a variable. And the reason for that is this will be the area where we actually fill uh, our slot widgets into and we can make this border a different color maybe black maybe say a 0.5 in transparency something like that um, it shows up it's white I think that's okay though I'm not entirely sure but it should be Content and color, that's not the one. I wanted the brush one, I believe. This one I think is the one I'm after. My bad. So now you see that it changed color. So I've been changing content and color opacity. Let's reset this one to whatever it was. Because that one will likely um, color whatever objects, so the widgets that we're placing it, and we don't want to do that. So this is what our what our inventory widget is going to look like that's all good and fine uh, for now we will be returning to this when it comes to the code uh, let's start with our hud so our hud is going to be containing the, th the things that we've made so far which means that if we go over here to user created we can now find our inventory container and we can just drag it out and see what kind of a, an amount of space it would take and how it would look. And we we'll can click the size to content and it will make sure to have the, the space that it has uh, desired on the screen. After that, we will make sure that it's aligned to the top right because if we're testing out in uh, our small little window like this, it's not using our full screen, which means that if we are not careful with our anchors, like if this was anchored to the left, for example, then these numbers here represent where they're going to be in relation to the left top corner. Meaning if this um, 
area of screen doesn't have that many pixels that means that it would try to go from this corner up here and go with 1300 pixels here and then try to write it and if it's outside of the screen it will not show up and you would be confused to what, why that is happening which is why it's important to make sure that you have anchors that make sense they are supposed to be to the corners that they are supposed to be aligned with or to the center for example so we want to have it to the top right and these are the coordinates that it gets in relation to this corner to, to make sure that it appears up here. We can go for something a little bit more uh, exact, so minus 500 and 100 maybe, something like that. And that should be good. We can also, to make sure, just to have as a debug in the beginning, we can have a text. We can put it up here. It's going to be anchored to the left. And this is going to just say hot. And the reason we put this one in here is to make sure that uh, it, usually when people work with widgets they tend to forget to add them to the viewport. Uh, if we were to have an issue with our inventory not showing up properly, then at least we should be seeing this text over here saying that the HUD is showing which this widget belongs to, or which is this widget, making sure that we know that the inventory is the issue and not actually showing the HUD. If this doesn't show up, then we know that we haven't actually managed to get the HUD to show even. In addition to this, we are actually going to be adding an overlay. And we're doing this early, rather than later when we need it. And we will be coming back to why this is being used later. So we will add it over here and we'll say that it should be anchored to the top left like it is and it can have these coordinates that's fine we can actually make it no, it's fine and then we give this a name and we give this a name like um, uh, let's say uh, inventory loot loot let's call it loot inventory that makes more sense like so and the reason we have this here is because this will sort of be our anchor where we place other inventories that we want to loot. So we will have our inventory over here appearing and this one will be sort of dynamic and we will say that show it over here. Uh, but we'll get back to that later on. So let's actually add some logic to our widgets now because let me explain what we're planning on doing each of our slots is going to be itself sort of a container that holds all the information about the item that's in the slot so if we go to the graph what we want to do is actually have that information available which means we have to add an item info and of the type s item info and can okay, remove the tick what we want to do with this is we want to have this information instance editable and exposed on spawn so someone can create uh, a slot immediately sending in an item info and we just update it um, and the item info itself here holds the information, but we need to have it represented by these different widget elements that we have here. So if we grab our item info here, and by the time we get a construct here, we are have already had this information uh, sent in, in most cases, which means we can just take this information and break it, like so. And then we take this and then we get a reference to our item icon for example and then we drag out from that one and we say set uh, brush from texture like so and then as a texture we send in our icon texture here and then we just connect these like so that means that when this constructed we're gonna make sure to set the icon to look exactly like the icon that we have entering here and in addition to that we also have the the item name we also have the item amount so 
So we drag in those. And item amount, we say set text. We want to have this one that says widget set text text. And as text, we can just drag our amount into so. Uh, for item name, we can say set text as well. Like so, and for that one, we want to have the name from our actual uh, enumerator over here, but we can't apply that here. We need to have it first to string like we did before. So enum to string, because that's the user-friendly name, meaning the text value. And dragging this one in here makes it convert. So if we clean this up a little bit, we get something like this. Like so. So the point of this is, this is supposed to tell us that we are updating the widget to actually represent what's happening. Now, this will happen in construct, but it might also happen at a different point in time. So we want to make a custom event here, which we call update widgets, because we might have at some point when we are actually updating like the quantity or something like that, or we have uh, the widgets replaced with a different item. So at that point, we also want to have it happen, all of this happen, uh, not only for the construct one. So what we can actually do is we do it like so. We'll have the update widgets actually doing the updating and the construct actually calling the update widgets like so. So the same code runs uh, for both you know, of these situations, which means that um, we have, we're less prone to errors instead of we had like this code duplicated, for example. Like so, that is all we need to do here for now. Um, let's go to our inventory container and let's go to its graph. Let's remove the tick. That is all for this episode. Hope to see you in the next one. Keep on learning, take care.